Hello again everyone and welcome back to Programming in Access 2013. My name is Steve Bishop. Today we're going to be continuing our series on VBA or Visual Basic for Applications. And I'm thankful to say that I've got the microphone situation all sorted out. Turns out the video recording software I was using was causing some crackling noise and I apologize for that. Uh, I apologize for you having to suffer through that but we've got it fixed now and we're ready to get started. So today's topic is going to be on classes. Now classes offer us uh, a, a template for creating objects. And this is a very important thing to understand. Classes in and of themselves are not the objects, okay? They are simply a template for creating objects. You can think of them as like a cookie cutter, okay? They're not, they, they may sort of be an object in and of themselves, but they're not really designed for our purposes to be an object like that. Instead, what they do is they help us create an object. So we've got a gingerbread man cookie cutter that we create a gingerbread man from, okay? So in this particular case, I'm gonna name my cookie cutter class gingerbread man. It's CLS Gingerbread Man. And from CLS Gingerbread Man, if I want to create a gingerbread man from my class object, I simply do a dim and then the name of the object that I want to create as and then my class name, which is CLS Gingerbread Man. So this is very, very similar to uh, the way that you have been instantiating objects in the past or creating objects or creating variables. Okay, you're just dimming and then giving the name of the value uh, of the object you want to create, and then you specify as and then the class name. Now, with classes, you need to understand that there are two different components of a class that you will need to be concerned with. One of them is called properties, and the other one is called methods. Now, properties describe certain characteristics of the object. You can think of them as adjectives, okay? They're characteristics that describe the particular object. Things like the color, or the shape, or the price, okay? These are all descriptive characteristics of the object. Whereas methods describe the actions of the object, and you can think of those as verbs, okay? They're actions, they do something. Things like run, walk, and jog. All right, so understand properties are characteristics of the object. Methods give us actions that the object will perform. All right, so let's go ahead and back out into our database here. And to create a class, there are a few different ways you can do it. Okay, if I click on the Create tab up here, I'll have the option to create a class module. And then also right from my form here, I can click on Design, and there's a button right here that allows me to view the code, and I can go right into the code window. For right now, I'm going to go ahead and click on the Create tab and then go to Class Module. And you'll see that we get a class module here. Okay? So Class 1 is, the cla is, the, is initially the name of my class module. When I go to Save My Class, though, it'll offer me a way to change the name. So let's go ahead and get started with creating our class. In this particular case, I'm going to build a class that is similar to some of the tables that we've been working on. If you remember, we have different tables that we've been working on. One of them is the Table 1 Customers with an ID and a customer name. So let's go ahead and imitate that. First, what we need to do, though, before we even get started with giving our object any properties or methods, is we need to explicitly say Option Explicit. And what Option Explicit does is it indicates to Access that this particular class object, we will be explicitly declaring our, our variables, okay? Uh, Access will not try to determine what the variable type is for us, which is something that Access can do. It can try to, you know, based upon what the data is inside of it, try to figure out what should the object be or what should the variable type be. But by using this option explicit, we're telling Access we are explicitly declaring our objects, and we must do that before you can use them. If you don't declare your objects, then what you will get is a runtime error or a compiling error. All right, so how, let's start off with properties here. How do we create a property? It's actually pretty simple and pretty straightforward, as most of these things have been so far. We're going to start off by using the keyword public. Okay, and public is that keyword that we were talking about before that allows that this particular variable that we're creating is going to be available to 
every component of the application. Not just the class, not just internally within this class, but everything from our customer address forms to our reports, everything will be able to see this particular property. And now we just need to simply give it a name, which we're gonna give it the name of ID because that's the name that we gave this column of our customer name, of our customer on our table and customers uh, table there. So ID, and then we need to say it is going to be of a type of uh, integer, all right? Then the next thing we have is the customer name. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and just say public name as string. Okay, so this is very similar to how we created a table. If you recall, we have an ID field, we have a customer name field. Well, those are properties of the table essentially, or now we can say they are properties of our class object. Now, I'm going to save this, and we're gonna call it class customer, all right? So now, let's say we want to add a method and this again is fairly simple and fairly straightforward. Again, we need to use an access modifier of public, and let's say, um, let's call this, this is gonna be a, you can use either a sub, or you can say it is a function, okay? Either one works just like we've done before, and you'll notice that this follows basically the same coding pattern that we've already used in all of our other modules on this application. So we're gonna do public, sub, um, let's call it create, and since it's sub, we don't need to give it any sort of value here. And when we go to create it, we're gonna say that name is equal to Steve Bishop. Why not? Why not use my name, right? And we also need to say that the ID is equal to one, all right? So there we go, the ID is one, the name is Steve Bishop. So now, how do we use this? How do we use this class? Well, I'm gonna go to my form here, my just empty blank form that doesn't really have anything on it here, and I'm gonna go ahead and on, in the onload event, let's go ahead and create one. And remember, it's just dim, and then the name of the object. So we're gonna do customer, as a CLS customer, okay? So we've dimmed a customer, then that's the name of my object, and then we're saying it's as a class of customer. Now, there's something that you need to do with objects. This is fine, this is d basically declaring an object, but you have to do something with objects called instantiate. You need to instantiate your objects, and the way you do that is you use the set keyword and then you want to give the name of the object so customer and then you say it is equal to a new class customer okay this is how you instantiate the object because right now you're just creating a variable and you're giving it a type but you haven't actually filled it with any information you've just basically created this empty spot in memory but you ha and you've given it a name but you haven't actually filled it with anything, and it's not really new. It's just kind of, it's just kind of a on the heap of of your data. You haven't actually done anything with it. You need to instantiate it by using this set customer equals new class customer. Now there is a shortcut to this, and this doesn't always work depending upon the object that you have. What you can also do is just simply do dim customer two. I'm going to do another customer here. And then we say as new CLS customer. Both this and this essentially do the same thing. So you don't need to do the set customer as new class customer. There is a difference, and we will get into what the difference is between these two things. Uh, but for right now, understand that both of these methods are a proper way to declare your variable and instantiate them. So, so now how are we gonna use this? Well, let's go ahead and now that we have our customer instantiated, let's use it. So we can say uh, customer, and now you'll see when I use the dot notation, I have the create 
method is available to me, and I have ID and I have name. So I can set an ID and I can set a name. So let's go ahead and set the ID value equal to two, and customer name equal to test. And now let's debug dot print the customer name and see what we get. If I go ahead and run this, let's view our form and that's just going to print out to our window here. There's test. That's what we named it, right? But what we can also do is remember I changed the value. So right now the, the name is test, but I can use that create method. So customer dot create. And if you recall my create method, if I right click on the create method and go to definition, it'll actually take me to the public sub, the method in my class object. And we can see that it sets the ID value and the name for me. So remember, I chain, I'm changing the name to Steve Bishop. All right, so let's go ahead and now that I've got, uh, let me go back to my last position here. So I'm going to run the create method on my customer object. And now customer name, instead of saying test, should be that name of Steve. All right, so let's go ahead and go to design view and let's run it again. Lo and behold, there's the new name because we, we changed the name when we ran the create method. All right, so we're going to stop right there for right now. This is pretty exciting information, I think, for you guys. This is really going to become important later on when you're try trying to uh, handle a lot of different things or maybe you have those repetitive tasks that you want to do over and over again. Class objects are a very good way to handle and manage those type of circumstances.